and get rolling in that. So, hey, good morning, everybody. Thanks for coming. Uh, welcome back. Uh, today, we're going to do some scripts. We're going to do some dialogues. We're going to have some fun. And i uh, going to share with you some of my favorite scripts, some of my favorite dialogues, um, and just try to explain to you what you say is important, but how you say it is even more important in that. So, one of the things I've learned is, is the power of communication, the power of words you use and how you change things. And how many of you have experienced when you say something and somebody heard it completely different? Right. All the time. All the time. All the time. So what I'm going to try and do is try to position what you say in the right way for you and be able to get the results you're looking for. Um, and so that's what I'm hoping to accomplish this morning. A good friend of mine, and, and a lot of you may have heard of this acronym and heard of this technique and heard of this, this is a common universal script and a common universal process. But one of the things I learned from a good friend of mine is, is that he is a, uh, in the high net worth uh, luxury market real estate side of things. And a lot of his activities were involving him with going to networking events and, and fundraisers and galas and things like that. And his natural gift and his talent, or I guess his love to be able to small talk and just talk to people, isn't one of his fortes, if you know what I mean. So, so he struggles with small talk. He struggled with communication. He struggled with being in that environment of networking with individuals and talking to people. And he needed to find a way for him to make it a little bit more natural, a little bit more easier for him. And then he came across what we call the Ford Dialogue or an acronym that stands for family occupation, recreation, dreams. And you've heard different things in that and different versions of this. But I think this is, this is one of the most universal scripts for you to speak with somebody that you've never met before. It's also one of the most uh, advantageous dialogues for you to be able to get someone to trust you quickly, to build rapport with them quickly and to get them to like you quickly. And you've heard the famous world, famous Dale Carnegie say that, the world's greatest conversationalist is actually someone who says little or nothing. The world, what he meant by that was, is the world's greatest conversationalist is actually the person that listens and speaks less and listens more. So I don't believe it's by chance that the good Lord had given us two ears and only one mouth. Would you agree? And so yeah. I think his intention was we we're supposed to listen twice as much as we were, we're supposed to speak. Now, one of my mentors said that I can talk a dog off of a meat wagon. I have that gift and that talent and that. But the reality is, is that in sales, the irony of it is, is that one that is the best listener is actually the one that is the greatest conversationalist when it comes to speaking and what you say and how you say it. So in this dialogue, you're familiar with it. I would introduce myself, chat with people, and I'd say, so, uh, hey, tell me a little bit about yourself. And where did you grow up and where were you born and where did you and how did you end up there and what you like about living there and what was your culture like and 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 you're you're dialoguing and you have siblings and parents and talking about it and 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 you're working that whole family discussion again I'm asking them the questions and then they're answering back to me and telling their story and how many would you agree it's quite easy for people to talk about themselves People find it very easy to talk about themselves and they like to share with themselves. Would you agree with me? Right. Yeah. Right. So they're very comfortable and you're just asking, you know, where do you live and where do you grow? And, and what I find is agents, real estate agents, you need to make sure that you're sincerely interested in what they're having to say. Be present, be intentional, be, be, be aware of what they're saying, what they're responding in that and listen carefully in that. And then, they will feel like, hey, you're somebody that's so easy to talk to, that you're, you know, you're you're just somebody I can talk to naturally in that. And you'll find that if you're good at this and natural at it, that you'll use this technique or use this script or dialogue and people will just find it that you're you're natural and it's who you are and it's not something that was so scripted and so rigid and so uh, so difficult. And when I do this with a lot of people they're like oh my gosh you did that ford thing it's like jedi mind stuff but you did that to me and you did it in a way that i didn't even know you were doing that to me kind of thing right so so mm -hmm. the most important thing is do not rush this conversation do not rush through the process 
what you're trying to do is you're trying to find things and find things that you're in common with that individual. And you're looking for that moment where you have a connection where I, I use this terminology because I have teenage kids. You're like, you're waiting for that BFF moment, which BFF means best friends forever. For those of you that don't know how to have high school kids and that and children. And so you're waiting for that moment where you and I have something in common and we chat and we connect. And you would agree when we find that connection, we have that commonality, then the level of energy and the connection increases and gets better. Would you agree? Yes. Okay, because you're both excited and talking about that. So do not rush it. Wait until you have that BFF moment in that. So if we don't have any connection from the uh, from the uh, family side of things and where you're born and where you grew up and where you went to school and things like that, then I move into what you did for a living in the past. And what you like about that job? What you dislike about job? What brought you into that? occupation would you do that for a living and, and you're looking for those common connections in that and looking for that opportunity where you would connect or have something in common when work wise or career wise or business wise and if that doesn't happen then i'm going to move into the recreational category so from a recreation standpoint you're looking at so what are your hobbies what are your things that you do for fun uh what do you do for recreation purposes and things like that for thrills and and, and connection and you're trying to see if there's anything in common with them and you there and then Obviously, I'm not going to ask somebody that I've just met what they're dreaming about. That's probably relatively in, uh, inappropriate. Would you agree? Right. So, hey, by the way, we just met. What are you dreaming about? I, they'll be like, pardon? Kind of thing. So I'll ask them what some of the things on their on their bucket list, on their BHAG, on their dream. If they had all the time, money, and, and, and all the time and money in the world, what would be the sum of the things that you just love to do and who would you love to do it with and where would you like to go and what would you like to see in that? And that's paraphrasing that dream category, right? So using that family, using that occupation, using that recreation, using that dream dialogue, I'm trying to find that connection, get them to trust me, get them to like me, build that rapport, and it's something that you learn and internalize and become really good at it and, and natural at it. How many people like that dialogue or can use that dialogue and see the benefit of being able to do that, that don't enjoy that small talk and that conversation on a regular basis? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. So there, there's one for you. And a lot of times my buddy says to me, before I go to these events, I'm like literally going family, occupation, recreation, dreams, F O R D F O R D. And he's getting himself all pumped up and that, and remembering it, what he needs to do when he's meeting people and talking with people. Okay. So there's one, I think really beneficial, really good dialogue and script that you can use. The next one comes from, uh, Joe Nego. So Joe Nego is the, the sidekick with Brian Buffini, a good friend of mine, mentor of mine, and, and I've known Joe for quite a, quite a long time now. And he had a dialogue and a script that he used called the Mayor Campaign. And what Joe did was he took and named this because he was from Chicago, and Chicago is a pretty politically charged city in the United States and that. So politics, a lot of power, a lot of uh, people campaigning and things like that. So he named this the mayor campaign. And what I love about this script and what this dialogue is, is, is that this actually has a multi-purpose and a multi-use script and dialogue for you guys. Okay. All right. How many people are familiar with the mayor campaign dialogue? Anybody heard about it before? Uh, some of us. Some? Okay, great. So the reality is this, this dialogue is number one dialogue for you to be able to add someone new to your list of relationships to your database okay if they do not have an agent of choice the technique or this dialogue is an excellent script and dialogue for you to use to add someone new to your to your team to your database and they don't have an agent of choice this is also an excellent excellent dialogue and script for you to be able to qualify and to be able to purge your existing database. So I find that so many agents say, oh, I got so many people in my mailing list, so many people in my email list, I got so many people on my list and that. And the reality is, is that they have no clue whatsoever if they're the agent of choice with those people, okay? And they're almost running their business blindly, running it falsely, having this false sense of security because I've got like 800, 1200 names, whatever, emails, address, and things like that. And I'm thinking to myself, but you don't have a clue if 1190 of them are actually going to be using you or if you're their agent of choice. Would you agree? Yeah. Okay. 
So let me role play and script and dialogue how you can use this to add someone to your database. So one way I can do it is in a social atmosphere. So socially wise, I could be out and about networking at an event or things like that. And just out of curiosity, I always start off by asking people what they do for a living, right? So we talk about work and that. And then I'm hoping that the dialogue will be reciprocated and they will end up asking me what I do for a living, right? And so that's the segue of how to do it in a social way and a social environment of using the dialogue. So I'll talk about what they do for a living in hopes that they'll return and ask what I do for a living. And then it leads me to this afterthought of this after question. And, that, and I'll say to them, hey, just out of curiosity, I'll say, Annabelle, just out of curiosity, if you had a friend, relative, family member, somebody that you knew buying and selling real estate, who do you refer them to? Oh, you know, we get postcards every now and then, but I don't know. I, I haven't worked with him myself, so. Okay, great. The reason why I ask Annabelle is, is, that, is that from time to time, I have a program called the Client Appreciation Program, or I have my VIP Direct Client Program. And what it is, is that I find that four out of five people don't have an agent of choice. And so... From time to time, I give out tips on redecorating, revamping, remodeling, uh, best buys in the area. I host events. I do seminars, um, market statistics, graphs, things like that. And I'm just curious, would these items be of interest to you to receive on a regular basis? Yeah, that sounds interesting. Okay, great. And so once I know that they don't have an agent of choice, but let's just go back and say, Maybe Annabelle says, you know what, I have a great agent and his name is Jamil. And, I, and so so I'll, if you get that response, you guys, and they have an agent of choice, I want you to honor that. But jokingly, I'll say, hey, did Jamil get that ankle bracelet off yet? Is he, get the, is he still under home arrest yet? And that? I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Just trying to keep it light here. And that, so I'll, I, I might, I'll say to them, you know what, it sounds like you're being well taken care of. And it's nice to see that there's some loyalty in this industry. It lacks a bit. And that, and looks like Jamil's, you're in good hands and that, and, and I'll honor that. Does that make sense to everybody in the call here? So if yeah. you do say, and you have somebody that says they do have an agent of choice, please honor that behavior and, and do it in a respectful manner in that. And then, and then be able to continue on. But if they don't have an agent of choice, the better job you do, you guys, when you're communicating with someone like Annabelle of what you provide to them. Okay. So hot deals in real estate, uh, tips, renovate, like the more you can sell what you provide to people on a regular basis, the better you're going to get response in regards to them wanting to give you their name, email address, cell phone number and that. Would you agree? Yes. Right. Okay. So if you tell them that, you know, I, I, I got some things, I got some stuff, right. That they're going to be like, so cautious and like you're asking for their personal information which is so guarded so that you really need to sell and really need to not sell but you really need to communicate the value you add to them and what you're going to provide to them and how it's going to benefit them in order though them want to giving your personal private information would you agree yeah okay 100%. 100%. So I'll say to Annabelle, hey, a lot of times the people get too much electronic correspondence. So I'm a little old school and I go back to sending stuff hard copy as well as electronic copy and that. So I'll ask, hey, what's the best place I can send it to you physically? And what's the best place I can send it to you electronically? And then in case I got to call you about a hot tip or hot deal or insider information about real estate transactions or something that I know is going to affect you and what you own, what would be the best number I could reach at, Annabelle? And now I'm going to try and communicate and get her cell phone address and that. OK, so I'm going to let her know that her exchanging email, phone number, personal address and that is going to be valuable and beneficial to her that she'll want to give me that information. Would you all agree? Oh, yeah. OK, mm -hmm. now imagine if I'm calling a past client of mine, say I call Annabelle and she's a client of mine. I'm like, hey, Annabelle, how's it going? And all family, occupation, recreation, dreamer first. Right. And go through that dialogue. I don't want to jump right to the business. And I'll just say. Hey, Annabelle, just out of curiosity, can I ask you a quick question? Can I take my friend hat off and can I put my real estate hat on for a second? Would that be okay with you? Yeah. Right. You see how I transition our conversation and I, polit I politely ask permission to talk business now and put my real estate hat on and that. And I'll just say, out of curiosity, if your friends, family members, coworkers, people like that are buying and selling real estate, who, who are you referring them to? Can I ask who would you refer to? And then she may say, well, you know what, wait. Like my sister's in the business, so I get my sister that business and that, and, and I would do that for you, but you can understand it's family and this and that. So then Annabelle doesn't know this, but 
I'm qualifying my database. So when we hang up, guys, what am I going to do with Annabelle's contact information in my database if she says her sister's her agent of choice? Do not call list. <laughs> do not call list. You're going to delete her pants, right? And 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 I and that and. I would rather know that her sister's in her agent of choice and she's in the business than to continue inviting Annabelle, no disrespect, Annabelle, to my client events and mailing correspondences and doing all this stuff and doing pop by gifts and adding value to her and her life. When all I know is, is that she's going to end up buying and selling with her sister because I'd want to buy and sell with my sister too, right? It makes sense to me. So can you see how that script in dialogue qualifies your client and is able for you to purge your database and clean your database up? And at the end of the day, you're going for quality, right? Not quantity when it comes to a relationships list in a database. And using this database, I can add people to my database and that when I'm out in social, or I can purge and qualify my existing list of people. Guys, this takes courage. It takes guts. But wouldn't it make more sense to know that I've got 50 people that I'm their agent of choice than 300 people and 250 people are using another agent on my list? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Makes sense to me. Makes sense to me. Now, lastly, not least, I always use this mayor campaign dialogue with my coaching clients in regards to when you're out prospecting. So it's kind of like, I'm going to date myself. It's kind of like Columbo when he comes to the afterthought. And so he's saying, and so before, say I'm door knocking, I will end the dialogue with the mayor campaign saying, hey, just out of curiosity, if you had a friend, family member, relative thinking about buying and selling real estate, who do you refer and recommend that business to? I'll always use that question as a, as a closing dialogue when I'm out prospecting because I always want to take opportunity to capture and add another person to my list of relationships. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right. Guys, do you understand the power of one person adding to my database today? I didn't add one. I added 150. Average North American knows another 150 people. So it is a good day in real estate when I add somebody to my to my database that is, is considering me as their agent of choice, but I didn't add one. I added 150 each day. Would you agree? That's a good day. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Yeah. So a lot of times I'll find agents, they cold call, they warm call, they prospect and that, but they ended up not collecting any people and adding them to their team, adding to their funnel. And I'm like, oh, what a wasted or what a missed opportunity not using this script or dialogue and not adding somebody to your team and adding them to your list of relationships that don't have an agent of choice. Okay. So don't miss out on opportunities. So you can see how now I can add people in a social environment. I can qualify my existing relationships and purge them if I need to. And now I can use this as an afterthought and an addition to my database as a prospecting afterthought when I'm out prospecting lead generation. So it has a multi-use, a multi-purpose. How many people can see themselves using that? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, next one. So this is going to be for a lot of people in the room. This is called the confession script. This is called I am a heathen and I'm a bad realtor and I suck because I haven't talked to you in a in, in a in a light year, right? And that and that so this script becomes very, very, very important to you guys. Okay. How many people in the room and I can't see show of hands that have not talked to people for a very long time and you've been a bad, bad realtor? Yeah. There's people raising their hands. Good. Okay. So this is for you. You are going to contact people. You are going to let them know that working with you in the past was very enjoyable for me. And I'm glad that I could be of service. But since then, I must admit, I have stayed. I have not stayed in a close contact with you. And as a result, I would have liked to have. So I know and understand the kind of people I want to work with in the future. And they're great people. And they're people like yourself. Right. So I want to say I'm sorry. I want to apologize to you and I'm going to let them know that I'm turning over a new leaf. I have a new program and I'm moving forward. I'm going to make sure that they feel like they're first class passengers on my airline. Do you think that there's people in the room that I'm talking to right now that need to say they're sorry to need to turn over a new leaf and need to let people know that you're going to do a better job of, of adding value to them and not loving them and leaving them and treating them like they're a transaction. Would this be a very helpful dialogue? Yes or no? Yeah, for sure. Okay, for sure. So I, these scripts and the slide decks, I'll get to you guys. But this one here is an. This is a letter format, but you can do it in a letter format. You can do it in a phone format. You can do it in a, in a text format, a phone call format. But at the end of the day, I believe that all of us. It's just one of those sad but true things in real estate that we're so busy looking for the next person 
that we forgot about the people that we already had in our relationships list, right? And that, and so it's time for us to say we're sorry. It's time to have the courage to say that I'm going to do better and that, and a lot of times they are so grateful and so happy you called and so apologetic and so, so understanding. And they're like, it's okay. Wait, no problem in that. And the, and the reaction you're getting is, is going to be absolutely mind blowing in that because those people liked you and they trusted you and they're appreciative that you're apologetic and that you're going to, and they're excited that you're going to do a better job moving forward. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. So this is a call about how you're going to educate them. So you're going to educate them about what you're going to do moving forward. So hi, it's Wade with ABC Realtor. And I wanted to give you a quick call and let you know that there's exciting new things are happening. I'm starting a new, uh, a new program in that. So one of the, you can call it your VIP direct program. You can call it your partner platinum plan. You, I want you guys to brand and to create your own name of your, your touches and what you're going to do for your people moving forward and have that program and make it exclusive to yourself. Can you all do that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So think of it like I like alliterations. I don't know if anybody knows what alliteration is, but using the, the PPP. So I, I called mine the, my platinum partner plan. Right. And so, and, and I named it my client database or my client appreciation program. I called it my platinum, everybody feeling like they like to be treated like platinum, clients and things like that. So I named mine my PPP program, the Platinum Partner Plan, and let them know moving forward that I was going to do a better job of deepening my relationship with them and, and looking at and, and having a friendship and adding value to them as their trusted advisor in hopes that I might be able to do business with somebody they know, right? It's not about the person I'm talking to. It's about adding value and deepening that relationship and knowing that they're going to they're going to insist me to the other 150 people that they know. Does that make sense? If I do a good job. Okay. Yeah. So my call first is my script is to educate them, then qualify them, make sure that I am their agent of choice and I have uh, that I, I'm good to go with them and then get permission to communicate with them. So I'm not trying to pick on anybody in the room, but has anybody taken liberties of a database or a church directory or a sports team or things like that? And you didn't get permission to communicate and you kind of maybe have spammed that list of people. And so I had a coaching client in the past that was on a hospital foundation and they took liberties of using that list of relationships and, and, and putting their business in front of that list of group. And it turned into a big revolt and it turned into a negative experience for them. And actually like it really hurt their business and hurt their reputation. If you know what I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah. So does everybody understand the importance of the dialogue of getting permission to communicate? and not assuming that you have liberties of being able to, to assume that you have abilities to talk to them. Everybody understand how I, what I'm talking about there? Yes. yes. So the script is here on how to educate them, how to qualify them, how to get permission, and, and how to move forward and what you're gonna do forward. Any questions on Ford, Mayor, Confession, Apology, or Educate, Qualify, Get Permission dialogues? That helpful? Yep. Yeah, it was helpful. Okay, awesome. So I'm going to quickly jump forward because I know Jamil wanted me. Uh, here is a one day, one week, one month call script. Anybody do that? Call your client first day after cl closing, uh, first month and first week, first month and that? Anybody using that that process? No, no not yeah. right now. Okay, perfect. So here you go, guys. And So first day moving in, first week move in, first month move in. Which one's going to have the greatest impact? First month. Of course, of course, they're going to be blown away. Oh my gosh, I can't believe you're calling me, Wade. That's amazing, right? And that, and when do things happen with people's properties that you could maybe help out with and, and how to do it? First day, first week, or first month? First month. First, first month. month, right? It's always the first month. So I encourage you and challenge you all to consider calling and checking in first day, first week, first month, okay? They'll be glad you did and you will be too, okay? All right? So... Let's talk about this is telephone or door knock, and we've got just listed, just sold, invite to open, and bona fide buyer. Okay, I'm just going to quickly let everybody know on the call that the two most effective are just sold and bona fide buyer. Okay, just listed is good, and mm -hmm. invite to open is good, but the two most effective are just sold and bona fide buyer. The reason being is is that you're connecting with the with the person's greed factor the greed side of things so 
I get a better response when people know that I still have people looking or I have people wanting to buy their home in that. I get a better response than, than telling them about the new benchmark price on their street or inviting them to their open house, okay? So if you're going to use, now again, going back to this whole full disclosure, do not call legislation, all of those things and that, you're going to have to use that and follow that and that if you're calling and that and, and working it and make sure that you use disclaimers not intended to solicit properties off for sale and all those things and that. So check with everybody's do not call legislation and 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 spam and, and, and all of the different laws and things like that before you go there, okay? Does that make sense to everybody on the call? Did I do, do a good job of covering my butt there? Yeah. Okay, awesome. All right, so... Here's a, a phone script, a door knock script, or everything on a just sold. So my approach is this. My approach every time is I'm going to ask people, could I ask you to help me? Could I get your help? What is a common person's response going to be when I say to say, hey, can I ask you for some help? What are they going to say? Sir, I'll try. Yeah, I'll what's, try. Going what's going on? How can I help? Okay. So I'm, I'm going to use the approach. I'm wondering if you could help me. Okay. So a quick introduction Hey, I'm Wade from ABC Realtor, and I'm wondering, Realty, I'm wondering if you could help me. And they'd be like, yeah, what's up, Wade? What's going on? What, you, what, what do you need, right? So here's my dialogue for Just Sold. So I just was in the area, and I wanted to share the new benchmark sale price on your street. Were you aware of what Just Sold and how, how much it sold for? No, we're not. Great. Well, it sold for X and this and this and that, blah, 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 okay? From my marketing efforts, there were people that missed out on that property. That property didn't work out for them and were working with people in the area. And I had just wondered if you had thought when one person sells, other people are thinking about selling. Would that be the case for you guys? Have you thought about selling now or in the near future? Right. And they may be like, yeah, we're thinking about it. Well, I wonder if they got that much for it or say they're not interested at all. I'm not going to let them cut off the dialogue if they're not interested and they're not interested. Now, I never get a door slam or a phone call hang up because people are always curious about what? The price. Yeah, exactly. They're always curious about the new benchmark price on their on their, on their their street, right? Or in their neighborhood or in their complex, right? But then I'm going to mayor campaign them before and go, hey, just out of curiosity, I'm just wondering if you had a friend, family member thinking about buying and selling real estate, who do you refer and recommend that real estate business to? Okay. And I'm going to ask, and then I'm going to sell them on what I provide and try to add value to them and see if I now can earn the right to become their agent of choice. See how I do that before I hang up or before they let the door slam, okay, or door close, okay? So from my marketing efforts, we're out about, here's the new benchmark pricing, still people looking, still people wanting to be in here, missed out, didn't didn't work out, and that had you thought about selling, and then mayor came campaign them before I go. Now, my bona fide buyer one is, hey, I'm wondering, I'm Wade from ABC Realtor, I'm wondering if you could help me out. And they'll say, yeah, what's wrong? What do you need, right? Hey, I made a promise, and now, the more you humanize the bona fide buyer dialogue, the better response you're gonna get. Why? Because there's an emotional pull. Exactly. No. Right? They, they think you're lying, too. Yeah, exactly, right? They, there's two reasons. There's an emotional pull, plus they think that the, you're baiting and switching them and you're using the old, you know, I got liar, liar, pants on fire, I don't have a buyer technique, right? So they, they, so you have to humanize it, you have to bonify it, and you have to make it legit. And then I'll tell my client's story, their first names, their kids' names, their dog, cat's name. I'll let them know where they're relocating from, what they do for a living in that. And I'm really going to get them to connect and humanize that client so that they want. And I'm wondering, I made a commitment to them that I was going to find something for them. And I'm wondering if you could help me. And then all of a sudden, I don't know if anybody's old enough in this call to know about Mysteria Lane and the Desperate Housewives. And all of a sudden you get them walking out on the street and you get the 411 on what's going on, right? Now I hear they're in trouble and I hear them fighting each night and I hear he's got one foot in the grave and one foot out, right? And you start getting the whole intel of the street, what's going on and that more information than you want to know, right? And that, so they want to help you help that bona fide client when you've done a good job of presenting the information to them, okay? They want to help. And a lot of times you'll say, wow, where have you been? Like, that's incredible service that you're actually taking proactively trying to find a property and a home for them, right? And go, going that extra mile to do that. And they want to help you help you, okay? And then, of course, I'll try and mayor campaign them and add them to my database before we disconnect in conversation and dialogue, okay? Can everybody see how the just sold and a bona fide buyer approach would be very highly effective from a phone or a door knock process, right? Right. Right. Okay. Now, just listed, again, can I get your help? 
my just listed and my open house invite are much the same. I'm asking to help them. Who knows their neighborhood better than they do? Nobody. They do, right? So my just listed is here's the new benchmark pricing. And I'm wondering if you could help me work together to get and help pick your next neighbor. Okay, that's my approach with the just listed. Now, the other one is the same with a, as an invite to an open house is that I'm wondering, you're always curious, why don't you come by? Now, when do I invite them to come by for my open house? Before everyone time? else. Sorry, what was the answer? Before everyone else. Exactly. Okay, so I'm going to invite them 15 minutes for my VIP neighborhood previewing, 15 minutes before my open house, so that when the public shows up at 11, the neighbors are already in the house and they think this is a hot listing because there's people already in the house, but they don't know it's the neighbors, right? It's called marketing. Okay, makes sense. So again, yep. I'm inviting them there to come and take a look in case they know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody to help us find and pick their next neighbor in that from an invite to an open house or from a just listed perspective. Again, when I see them, I'm going to use that mayor campaign dialogue. Does everybody know that four out of five people don't use their same agent again. Isn't that insane statistic? They would, but they don't, right? So you guys have an 80% odds of being able to add someone to your database because they don't have an agent of choice. Because we don't keep in touch. We don't add value. We don't continue on with them, right? So that statistic will continue to keep us being able to build our database. But scary is it also is the same stat that can kill your business as a veteran agent as well, okay? Any yeah. questions? Any questions on the just listed, just sold, bona fide buyer, or invite to open dialogue? Are those helpful? Yes. Works yes. Okay. Fisbos for sale by owners. Okay. So I'm going to introduce myself as a specialist in the area, and my dialogue is going to be this. And so Annabelle, let's dialogue again. So, hi, Mr. Mrs. F hi, Mrs. Fisbo. How are you today? Uh, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Hey. I, I'm all, I, my name is Wade. I'm with ABC Realty, and and I noticed that you're trying to sell your property. And and just a quick introduction, and I want you to let you know that I'm in the business of helping people sell their home. So I have a complimentary booklet I'd like to leave with you. And this booklet is how to how, you, how to sell your house yourself. And I wonder if I could leave you a copy of that and 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 see if that would be beneficial to you guys to be able to sell your house yourself. Would that be okay if I left you with a copy of this today? Yeah. Okay, great. And they're like, wow, what's up with that? Like, you're giving me a book on how to sell my house? Yeah, well, I specialize in the area, and I want to help people sell their home in that and, and do that for you. Hey, quick question for you, uh, Mrs. Fisbo. I'm just curious. Um, you know, a lot of times I'll ask somebody like yourself, if I had a buyer for your property, would you cooperate with a, with a licensed agent? Would that be the case in your case, in your home? If we had a buyer, would you cooperate? Yeah. 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 And so a lot of times people say they just want to save part of the commission or half of the commission in that and that so in order for me to know if I had a buyer I obviously would need to see your home would now be a good time for me to take a look at your home oh no we have family okay no problem no problem so you know if I could come back because I am a specialist in the area and I love and take pride in knowing what's on the market and what's off the market private or on MLS when would be a good time for me to come back and just preview and take and get you to tour me through the home so I could see if I have a buyer for your property when would be a good time for you um, well, maybe if I don't sell it, you okay. can come back. Okay, okay. Well, interesting. So so in order for me to know if I have a buyer, all I need is a quick few minutes. Now, would you mind if, if I just come through and quickly just took a look at now? Oh, quickly, you don't have to fix anything. You don't have to clear anything. I just want to quickly run through, take a couple snapshots of my head in that, and then be able to know whether I have somebody. And, and I trust you will be fast and we can just do it right now. Would, be, would that be okay with you to just quickly run through? Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So thank you for hearing me. Thank you for letting me in, Mrs. Fisbo. I appreciate that. Right. So what I'm also going to do is as I'm going through, I, I'm going to ask permission, Annabelle, if I could take pics and take some, some measurements. And what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to come back in a few days and I have a sample of my brochure, you guys, with me. Okay. So I have this package on how to sell their house themselves. And then I have a sample of what my brochure looks like that I provide for my sellers when I market their home. But it's a generic one. It doesn't have my C21 logo on or anything or any. It's, a, it's just a generic one. And I'm going to ask Annabelle if it will be okay for me to take some pics and to take some measurements on that. And then I'm going to put this together and bring her back a stack of of complimentary brochures to use for her and her marketing of her house herself. Yeah. Okay. 
And, and of course, she's going to say, yeah. OK, so the idea with the for sale by owner is to leave them the booklet and to offer to do something and create brochures for them and then come back. And then each Friday, I'm going to fiscal Friday, I'm going to keep coming back and I'm going to be giving her something else, another tool that will help her sell her house herself. OK, each week. Now, sooner or later, Annabelle's going to be like, OK, Wade, like, what's up? What's with you giving me the book? What's with you giving me brochures? What's with you giving me a blank contract? What's with you giving me a grass registry book? What's with you? And, and they're going to ask me the question, and then I'm going to be completely authentic and truthful and honest with her, and I just tell her why. Here's why, Annabelle. The statistics say that if you sell your house yourself, then you're going to need to buy. And I'm hoping that that would be a consideration for you to buy with me. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Now, also the statistics say if you're unsuccessful, then you're going to be interviewing agents. And I'm hoping that down the line that you'll see value in what I'm doing here today. And you'll consider interviewing and hiring me for the job to, realist, to list your home if it doesn't sell. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Also, if you're successful with the help of my booklet and my tools and that, in my experience, a lot of times people like yourself refer me to their friends and family in the future for helping them sell their house on their own and repeat and referral business is a big part of my business and that and I'd be honored to be able to help a friend or a family member to sell their home in the future as a referral based on that. So those are the three main reasons why I truly do this and why I try to help people like yourself sell their home themselves. Nice. And they say, oh, that makes sense, right? And that now we were taught traditionally, everybody in the call, it's been in real estate for more than 10 years on this call. We've been traditionally told to tell them they're going to get robbed. They're going to get murdered. They're going to be stupid. They're dummies for trying to sell their house and that. So I'm coming in at a totally different angle on a 180 on this when, and I'm trying to help them and, and explain to them why there's a method to my math, mad, madness in doing that. Does that make sense to everybody on the call? Yes. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Last but not least, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to do expired quickly. Okay. So, okay. Everybody in the industry doing an expired listing that's no longer the, is all calling or mailing. Would you agree? So I believe this, I'm a firm believer. You guys, people that are going to list with me need to know whether they trust me and like me and have met me. So I'm going to their door. And a lot of people say, Oh, good idea. Wade. They get mad when you phone them. They get mad when you mail them. And now they're going to be super happy because you're coming to their door, right? Are you kidding me, right? Right, right, that you're thinking that. Dude, I think that my chance of getting their business is way higher if they got to meet me and got to see me and got to experience and chat with me than it is mailing and phoning them. Would you agree, guys? That's just my personal opinion, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so my first thing is I'm a firm believer if I can make you laugh, I can make you buy. So I'm going to tell you, hey, I'm Wade from ABC Realty, and I bet you the last person, we've been notified your home's no longer in the market. I bet you the last person you want to see at your doorstep right now is another real estate agent. Hey, Annabelle? And she's going to laugh and go, yeah, you got that right. You're the last person we need to see. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make light of me being coming to her door. I, we've been notified. I bet you they're calling you. I bet you they're mailing you. And I bet you the last person you want to see at your doorstep is another agent coming to your door now on top of that. And, and I said, am I right? And she'll laugh and say, yeah, you're probably, you're right. Right. So my first, then my next dialogue is Annabelle, I want to say that we are sorry. I am so embarrassed and I am so sorry that organized real estate has failed you and let you down. So I'm apologizing right up front and being truthful and honest that you must be so frustrated, so disappointed that organized real estate has failed you. Would that be the case, Annabelle? That's exactly how I feel. That's exactly how I feel. Hey, I was wondering if you didn't mind, would I be able to ask you a couple questions? Question number one is, Annabelle, why'd you want to sell? What were you going to do when you sold and why you wanted to sell? We wanted to make money <laughs> okay excellent and what would you do with that money so you're wanting to make money tell me more what, what were you hoping to make money for oh retirement you know <laughs> okay so try trying to free up some capital so that you'd be able to have a better lifestyle would that be the case is that what you're saying yeah okay so we're going to talk a little bit more and i'm going to probably because of interest of time i'm going to quickly shorten this up the next question i'm going to ask annabelle is hey can you tell me like I'm looking at the photos here. I'm looking at the, the previous listing I, and I'm confused here. Can you tell, why do you think it didn't sell? I don't know. It's perfect. <laughs> right. So I love your answer, but that's not going to be the case. They're going to start talking about everything that the last agent, what guys? Didn't do. Didn't do. And they're going to, and so it's my turn to let her vent. It's my turn to let her go. Okay. So 
pretend she's told me her story of what she wanted to do in retirement and sell and free up capital and things like that. And then pretend she's told me the story and we've paraphrased and I've probed deeper. She's told me all the things that were upsetting to her failed and what they didn't do in that. And so now I'm going to recap and summarize and say, Annabelle, what I heard you say was that you wanted to retire, free up some capital. You and your husband were going to do this and move here and that. Have I heard you? Yes. Yes. And then say, and then what I heard you say was you, this was upsetting to you. This didn't happen. You were really upset with this. And then this one thing and that, right? Have I heard you as well? Yes. Okay. Now, why is it important for me to ask, paraphrase and recap and summarize and ask if I've heard her? Because she feels the last agent didn't what, guys? Sure. They didn't, didn't listen. Them. They didn't listen. They didn't, right? And didn't hear them, right? So I'm going to ask her one quick question. Uh, two more questions, sorry. If I could ensure that you could get on with your husband's and your dream of being retired and freeing up capital, and I could ensure that none of these mistakes are created again for you in the future in marketing your home, would you be interested in trying to see if we could fulfill that dream again for you and your husband? Yeah. Okay, great. And just a quick question. Are you familiar with the remarketing strategies that my team uses to sell homes that didn't sell the first time? No. Oh, really? Okay. So then I'll share with her remarketing strategy number one. So remarketing strategy number one, guys, would be until I get the appointment, I'll share with her and say, could I ask you more? Okay. So remarketing strategy number one is using an odd sale price. It's a marketing strategy where most agents will list for 1.1 million or one point, but I'm going to list for a million nine hundred and eighty-seven thousand six hundred and fifty-four thousand, right? And sixty hundred fifty-four dollars. So I'm going to use an odd sale price. Why am I going to use a wacky numbered sale price, asking price like that, guys, in marketing their home moving forward? It gives more attention. Exactly, it gives more attention. And I'll say, you know, that's just one of the 30 remarketing strategies that I have, Annabelle. When would be a good time for me to sit down with you and your husband and share more of those remarketing strategies with you? No. Okay, great. Now, I'm not going to get that lucky. So I'm going to try and share and close three times. Why do I close three times? Because I'm going to get a 62% chance of the response I'm looking for after trying three times. So I share remarketing strategy number two. Remarketing strategy number two is my qualifying program. So I have a list, Annabelle, of questions. Here are the top 10 questions I ask other agents and about their client before they show the property and top 10 questions I ask the public before qualifying, before they come and show and, and view your home physically. And this is my qualifying program. How did you feel about the qualifying that happened with your previous realtor on your home? Qualifying, it didn't uh, qualify. Yeah. We used to tie tire cookers, lucky loose, whatever was that. And then I'll say, Well, so that's just one other one. And that when would be a good time for me to show you the other 28 that we have, right? And I'll try and close the second time. And then a third time, I try, try and close with a strategy like uh, uh, pre home inspection or a third party bank appraisal or whatever strategy you have in that. And if I try three times and close three times, I got a 62% chance or higher of getting an appointment and meeting with them and sitting down and explaining to them in great detail of my remarketing strategy and how I sell homes that didn't sell the first time. Okay. Cool. cool. All right. Awesome. Any questions, you guys, there's other scripts in here that I put in the templates in the slide deck for you. Did that, did what was the, which one was the nugget in the room that, that helped you guys today? That was that you think you could use effectively out there and, the, and, and get going on. Expired. Expired, listing. Expired. Yeah, good. People like that one. There's a lot more right now. So yeah, yeah. there's a lot to do. But even I, I've used that already and got one listing. Yes. And then that listing got us two more. I love From it. One man. Yeah. Good for you, Ramesh. That's awesome. Awesome. Can you include the uh, Fizbo book in your email? Yeah, you bet, you man. No problem. Yeah. Yeah, you bet. Good. Okay, we we already have a Fizbo. Okay. Yeah, I'll email you. Yeah. Sounds yeah. good, Wade. Yeah, the Thank book. You, Wade. The, the booklet. You're welcome, you guys. The the booklet is actually in how to how to sell your house yourself booklet, right? And and leave it leave it generic and leave it unbranded, just like the feature sheets with the the buy owners and that. Just keep it tight, yeah. keep it clean, right? Yeah. Okay. Don't don't get don't get caught branding the crap out of it because then it'll defeat its purpose. You guys keep it universal and generic. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds Thanks, Wade. good. Thanks, Wade. Send you the recording. I'll send you the slide deck. There's a whole bunch of other scripts and dialogues in here. And, and thanks for uh, spending time with me. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Take sir. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye for now. Bye. The story of the expired one.